Welcome. This is my instructional video on uh, uh, section 13.2, Exponential Decay. Now, here's kind of a cool thing. This here is the 2 to the x function. This is a growth function. Now, when the base is bigger than uh, 1, we get a growth function. When the base is less than 1, we get a, a decay function. Here's why mathematically from a symbolic perspective. Notice 1 over 2, 1 half, which is the function we're going to graph here, is really 2 to the negative 1 power because a negative sign on exponent means reciprocal. So this is the reciprocal of 2 to the first power. So that's 1 half. What does that look like graphically? Well, notice this is like the 2 to the x function, and we're raising it to the negative 1 power. Ah, that, a negative on the inside, because that would be negative 1 times x, right? So a negative on the inside is a horizontal reflection. So this function is a horizontal reflection of the 2 to the x function. So boom, there is 1 half to the x, this guy right here. Now, what are we doing to Mr. 1 half to the x function? Well, we're adding negative 2 on it. So forget the negative 1 here, that kind of like... We're adding negative 2. Then we're doing the exponentiation. That gives us this shape here that in green. And then we're going to multiply by 3. That'll be a vertical stretch. And then we're going to add negative 2 on the outside. That's going to be a vertical shift. So here's what's going on. We add negative 2 on the inside. That means we actually shift two units to the right. So this key point, instead of being uh, 0, 1, is going to shift over to be 2, comma 1. And then we're going to multiply by 3. That's going to stretch. So all these guys just change the, the scale on the axis here, right? So this is 2, 1. We're going to stretch it 3 times. So 1 times 3 is 3. So that point's going to become 2, comma 3. And then we're going to add negative 2 on the outside. That's going to shift the whole curve down 2. And that means the asymptote also shifts down 2. So 2, comma 3 shifted down 2 translates to 2, negative 1. There we go. There's the key point we started at that was 0, comma 1. After we did all those transformations, now you look at this guy, you look at the domain, you say, hey, I can understand the domain for that. That ain't too hard. Here's the domain. This guy, as it curves upwards, right? It never gets vertical, so it's going to expand to the left forever. So this guy is going towards negative infinity, and it's not going to stop. And then here on the right, it's pretty obvious this guy's shooting rather quickly towards positive infinity. So the domain, of course, is all real numbers. And then the range, here's the horizontal asymptote here. We went down 2, right? So that means the asymptote went down 2. So this is the line where y equals negative 2. And this graph approaches that line at the bottom. So it gets very, very close to it, but never touches it. So the domain starts at negative 2, but it's opened. It's not closed. And then goes up towards infinity. There's the range. Boom. There's the graph of our decay function as given. Next problem. Same thing. Here's the picture of 10 to the x. So 1 tenth is going to be the horizontal reflection of that. So I'm going to do this horizontal reflection thing real quick. Flip left, right, slide it over, line up our key point here. Okay. Then we're ready to do the analysis. Okay, so we're going to get, don't worry about the negative one thing here. So what are we doing in the function first? Well, we're adding 2 on the inside. That's actually going to be a horizontal shift to the left 2. So here we go. Boom, shift this guy left 2. So that means that key point, instead of being 0, comma 1, becomes or transforms to negative 2, comma 1. And then we're going to multiply by negative 1. Well, that's going to cause a vertical reflection. So I take the same curve. And I'm going to reflect it vert vertically. Now, when we reflect it, this is going to reflect around the middle of the diagram, but really it should reflect around the x-axis. So I'm going to adjust it for that. So when I flip it up down, I'm going to slide it down here. So now the asymptote is still approaching the x-axis just from below. And that means the key point that used to be up here, negative 2, comma, 1, now that key point is negative 2, comma, negative 1. And the last thing we're going to do is add 8. So that means the whole graph is going up 8. So that means the asymptote's going up 8. And the function's going up 8. And so when we go from negative 2, negative 1, and we increase the y value by 8, that's going to leave us at 2, comma 7. 
And then we look at this guy and we say, hey, what's the domain? Well, again, it's expanding out to the left forever, shooting out to the right uh, rather quickly forever. So it's all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. And the range is, because this guy's going down without bound, it's going to, uh, the lowest value is going to be negative infinity. In other words, there is no lowest value, but it comes up to, but doesn't equal, so it's open here, at 8. Next problem. So there's the 3 to the x function. This is 1 third to the x, so we're going to do a horizontal uh, reflection to show that. So there's our one-third to the x power function right here. Now we're going to add uh, two on the inside, so that's just actually going to be a horizontal shift to the left two, adding two on the inside. Okay, this doesn't mean anything anymore. So we shift this guy over two to the left. So that means instead of zero, one, that key point becomes negative two, comma, one. And then we're going to multiply by three, so this guy's going to get stretched three times. So negative 2 comma 1, the y value 1 is going to be stretched by 3, so it's going to become negative 2 comma 3. And then we're going to add negative 4. That means we're shifting down 4. So the asymptote goes down 4, and the function goes down 4. And so that means uh, negative 2 comma 3, when we go down 4, that's going to translate to negative 2 comma negative 1. And then we can do the domain, like every other exponential function. The domain is all real numbers. And then the range is, looking here, from negative 4, that's where the y-axis is, because that's the horizontal, our vertical shift of negative 4. So it's from negative 4 up towards infinity. There we go. There's a quick example for graphing three exponential functions that the bases are less than 1, right? 1 third, I think 1 tenth, and then 1 half. And so those are all decay functions. So in every case, we're approaching the horizontal asymptote, okay, get from a smaller value. Okay, I'm going to do some uh, contextual problems, also called word problems. The value of a truck purchased new for 28000 decreases by 9.5% a year. Write an exponential function and graph it using calculator. Use the graph to find out how many years the value of the truck will be $5,000. Okay, so I did the value in thousands, so we're going to use 28 instead of 28 with all the sexy zeros behind it. So at the beginning, at year zero, the truck's worth 28,000. At the beginning of year one, if the truck loses 9.5% of its value, that means it maintains 90.5%. Okay, so that's 90.5%. And that means as a decimal, for, to go from percent to a decimal, we slide the decimal two places to the left. So that's 0 0.905. So 0 0.905 times 28, that's the value of the truck at the beginning of the first year. Now, at the beginning of the second year, there's the value of the truck at the first year, and then it maintains 90.5% of its value again. So we multiply by another 0.905. And so this value here, the 28 times the 0.905 squared, that equals the value at the, at the end of the second year, or you could say the beginning, oh yeah, in the beginning of the second year. And so the beginning of the third year is the value at the beginning of the second year times 0.905 again. So here's what we get. We get f of n is equal to 28, because the common value here is 28. Everybody starts there. And then we're going to multiply by some number of 0.905s. The only question is how many 0.905s. That's the analysis we're going to do next. So notice in year 0, there's 0 0.905s. In year 1, there's 1.905. In year 2, there's 2.905s. Year 3, there's 3.905s. So the number of years in, that's the number of 0.905s we're multiplying. So there's our equation, 28 times 0.905 to the n power. I go over to Desmos. I put that equation in. I set up my window. I went from a negative 2 to 10. I'm just guessing about how much this is going to be. And then the y-axis, we know this is decreasing. It starts at 28, so that's why I picked 30 for the upper bound on the y-axis. Because we know at 0, it's going to be 28. And it's going to decrease. And it's going to get asymptotic towards 0. That's why... The bottom of the window is y is 0. 
we want to see the x-axis, you can put like negative 5 there. Ah, oh, now we see the x-axis 5. And then our question is, when does this guy equal, I think it was $5,000. Yep, when does it equal $5,000? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put, put a second function in here. g of n equals 5. And then we're going to see where the uh, value function intersects the 5. Now, notice it doesn't. We're out here to 9, and it's still not real close. So I'm going to change my window out to 20 for x. Boom, there's our intersection point right there. So notice the value, here's the value of the truck decreasing over time. As time increases, the value decreases, and when we get to 17.259 years, it's equal to exactly 5, which, since this is in thousands of dollars, is $5,000 exactly, and to the nearest 5 digits, that's 17.259 years. Bam. So final answer. 17.259 years. Okay, not that hard. Kind of reasonable, maybe. Uh, the value of a sports car purchased for 45000 decreases by 15% each year. Write an exponential function for the depreciation of the car plotted along with the previous example. After how many years will the two vehicles have the same value if they're purchased at the same time? Okay, so we're going to call this function G, and we're going to have to come up with an equation. So in year zero, the car's worth 45000 And then if it uh, decreases by 15%, that means it maintains 85% or 0.85 of its uh, value of the previous year. So at the beginning of year one, it's the value at the beginning of year 0, 45 times 0.85. And year two, it's the value at one year times 0.85. At year three, it's the value at the previous year, two years, times 0.85. So we notice g of n here is equal to the original value of the car, which is 45. And that's going to be times 0.85. That was supposed to be kind of a parentheses there. So times 0.85 to some power. Well, what's the power? So at zero years, it's 0 0.85s. In the first year, 1.85. In year two, 2.85s. In year three, 3.85s. So 0.85 is multiplied times itself n, the number of years, times. There's our equation. So we trot on over here and say, hey, let's make g of n equal to 45 times uh, 0 0.85 raised to the n power. Notice it popped up there. And if you just want to do a quick check, it should be, uh, intersect at 45. It does. That's the original value. We scroll up. There's the intersection of the functions. And it looks like they both equal $13,000 or $13,155 in 7.567 years. Bam. Not too hard. Okay, on a federal tax return, self-employed people can depreciate. Depreciate means to go down in value, just so you know it's kind of a finance term. They can depreciate the value of their business equipment. So suppose a computer valued at 2765 depreciates the rate at 30% per year. Use a graphing calculator to determine the number it will take for the computer's value to reach $350. So in year zero, it has a value of 2765. It depreciates at 30% per year. That means it maintains or retains 70% of its original value. So in one year, it's worth $27.65, the original purchase price, times 0.7. So that's what it's worth in one in year one. In year two, it's worth what it's worth in year one, times another 0.7. In year three, the type R is worth what, it's, what it was worth in year two, times another 0.7. So again, we have F of N is equal to the original value, 2765, times 0.7 to some power. And when uh, the year is 0, there's no 0.7s. When the year is 1, there's 1.7. When the year is 2, there's 2.7s. So the number of 0.7s follows n, the number of years. So 2765 
times 0.7 to the n power. So we're going to go 2765 times n to the 0.7 power. There we go. I'm going to reset my scale here. So let's set our y-axis to uh, uh, 2800. So there's our initial value, 2765. And then the question said, I have to check, I think it said when the value is 350. Yes, what will be the time when the value reaches 350? So we're going to fun uh, put function g. g of n is equal to 350. That's down here. We look where the two curves intersect. And it looks like it's at... Kind of covered up a second ago. It looks like it's at 5.795 years. So boom! There's the answer to the question we're asked. The typewriter reaches a value of $350 and 5.795 years. Oh, not typewriter, computer. Boy, I'm showing my age there. Okay, I think that was the last problem. It was. So that concludes this lesson. So I hope you learned something from it. I'm thinking the exponential functions, the decay functions, are like the growth functions. They're not that hard. There's a lot of common sense in building up what the actual explicit equation is. And then you use a graphing calculator, and it's easy to find the, the, question, the answers to the questions we're asked. If you have questions on this yourself at this point, probably you should come see me for tutoring. Other than that, ciao.